Next on Worcester News Tonight, students looking for change rally at Worcester City Hall as part of a nationwide climate strike. Plus, a new bill would penalize people who wrongly identify their animals as service dogs. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Anna Botari. Summer-like temperatures in central Massachusetts today and it looks like the warm temps will continue into the weekend. Let's get a first check of our local forecasts with meteorologist Pamela Gardner. Hey there, meteorologist Pamela Gardner. In the night sky tonight, you want to take a look at the International Space Station, the flyby at 8 o'clock. It looks like a moving star, lasts about five minutes and moves from southwest to east northeast. It's a pretty cool sight to see if you haven't caught it before. And we have a beautiful sky for it, mostly clear through the rest of tonight. 7 o'clock milder, comfortable temperatures in the low 60s by 11 o'clock and still a clear sky overnight. So we're going to dip into the upper 50s across Worcester County, Fitchburg, 58 Worcester 59 degrees. We expect some 60s though once you get towards and near the coastline tomorrow afternoon slightly warmer than today. The warming trend continues for both days this weekend we will be around 80 degrees in Worcester and a summery weekend continues for Sunday even warmer temperatures. Our next rain chance doesn't move in until Monday night. I'll show you some of that timing. Plus we stay pretty quiet for next week. What's going on coming up in your 10 day? Hundreds of students marched to Worcester City Hall Friday as part of a nationwide climate strike. They made their voices heard with their message, not enough is being done to combat climate change. Our Aaron Keating is in downtown Worcester tonight with those details. Aaron. Anna, today so many people skip work and school to attend a youth climate change rally here at City Hall. The the or it was organized by Worcester College students, but the turnout reached all ages. crowd in front of City Hall chants about fossil fuels and renewable energy. The Worcester Youth Climate Strike is a part of the global campaign to fight climate change. The kids saw it on the news last time um, yep. and they saw it all over the world and they were excited and they wanted to come and we take school very serious so the fact that they're not in school was a big deal. Keegan, Colin and Luca got to skip school to attend Friday's rally. Luca's mom, Jenna Hamill, says her kids are trying to prove a point by not going to school. She says they know more about climate change than she does. We watched uh, videos about greenhouse gases this morning on YouTube. They just have access to so much more information and they're just brilliant about it. The Worcester Climate Coalition organized the strike. Students from WPI, Holy Cross and Clark marched to City Hall from their schools. Lead organizer Andrew Etheridge says having their own strike was important for the Worcester community. You know, the debate we had at our meetings was, are we just going to organize so people can attend the rallies at Boston or are we going to have our own here? So, you know, being able to have this event in Worcester and have the support that we that was here today uh, is great. And I think it's a great start for, for the Worcester community. Speakers of all ages are calling for action from lawmakers. They are asking for 100% renewable energy through the removal of fossil fuels. Quinn Sigamon Community College's Ronald Neji says the first step in battling climate change is working together. We're all stuck on this planet together, so we have to figure out how to make sure that whatever amount of resources we have left, we're able to ration it correctly and use it appropriately. Hamill says her kids may be young, but they are the future. And if they want change, they need to use their voice. And no matter how big the problem is, it's not solved, so let's keep trying. And I think that's, there's no better lesson. That's really. all we can do. Global climate strikes will take place until the 27th. Etheridge was also passing around voter registrations. He wants people to know if they're not from the Worcester area, they can still vote locally in the elections. In Worcester, Aaron Keating, Worcester News Tonight. The man charged with murder in connection with the discovery of a burned body in Worcester faced a judge today. Raphael Guzman back in court after the new charge was filed yesterday. Alicia Palumbo has the story. My best friend. Still don't believe it. Friends and family of 30 year old Benjamin Pacheco are still in shock after the Puerto Rico native was murdered last week in Worcester, allegedly by his step nephew. Rafael Guzman is before the court. 35 year old Rafael Guzman hit his face Friday as he was arraigned on an upgraded charge of murder. 
Guzman, seen here in court last week, had originally been charged as an accessory to murder, along with two other men who are accused of helping to move Pacheco's body out of Guzman's Great Brook Valley apartment. Additional evidence was gathered, including a statement from a witness who told the uh, police how Mr. Guzman had admitted to stabbing and killing Mr. Pacheco. Pacheco's body was found burned, wrapped in bubble wrap and a blanket with a stab wound to the neck just off Granite Street in Worcester on September 10th. I don't know, I just, I can't take it in right now, you know what I mean? Be somebody who don't live in that life, and get caught up in that life, you can't, you can't believe it. Benny. Pacheco was a well-known music producer in Worcester known as Benny Beats. His loved ones say he got along with everyone and they don't understand why anyone would want to harm him. Family man, fun loving, all about his nephews and nieces, mom, his dad, he ain't deserve it. He was never a person in the street, he was at home. I mean, he was a good guy, good heart. Pacheco's family released a statement saying in part, Benny loved everyone and did not judge anyone. He just wanted to make everyone laugh and make sure everyone was okay. He would never say no if any of his friends or family needed a favor. We trust in God that justice will and is being served. Now, Guzman is being held without bail. He's due back in court October 7th. At Worcester District Court, Alicia Palumbo, Worcester News Tonight. The union representing state troopers will stop paying legal fees for their former president, who's accused of a bribery scheme. The vote was overwhelmingly in favor of stopping payments to cover Dana Pullman's legal fees. He was indicted last month. Prosecutors say he was stealing money from the union. A new bill filed by a central Massachusetts representative would penalize people who wrongly identify their pets as service dogs. As our Olivia Lemon found out, it happens more often than we think. She joins us now with more. Olivia? On a state rep, Kim Ferguson said she's gotten calls from people across the state running into the issue. And for people who actually need a service dog, it's impacting their way of life. Service dogs like Loring go through almost two years of extensive training and socialization before they're qualified to wear this vest. Most of our dogs are trained in seven prisons in Massachusetts and Rhode Island and taken out on the weekend by what we call our weekend puppy raisers so that they can get a full world view and socialization before they're matched with our clients. Needs trained service dogs in Princeton, the dogs help their owners be more independent and get around. Director of Development Kathy Zemitis says when a pet owner brings an untrained animal into a business, it can be unsafe if they interact with a service dog. Unsolicited barking, lunging, growling. State Representative Kim Ferguson has filed a bill which would fine people who knowingly misrepresent their dog as a service dog or service dog in training. We're hearing from people across the state regarding the issues that legitimate service dog teams are running into with access and being in businesses, restaurants, just out in public and having uh, non-legitimate service animals either getting in the way, interfering, attacking them and really impacting their way of life. Ferguson says while she understands pets can provide important emotional support to their owners, there should be an outline of enforceable behaviors for these animals. People in law enforcement, for example, and business owners can point to and say this is the law. These are the behaviors that the service dogs should be exhibiting or not exhibiting to, in order to you know, verify if they're interfering with the business or not or if they are truly legitimate service animals. Need says their service animals aren't the only ones who go through training, their owners do as well, so they know how to handle them. Part of that is a full class on public access, and so they do understand that having a service dog with them will make them more visible, will make the fact that they have a disability more visible, especially if it's a hidden disability like deafness or PTSD. Now, there was a hearing on the bill this past Tuesday. Ferguson is hoping to get a favorable report out of the Judiciary Committee. The bill will then move on to the House and Senate for a vote. In Worcester, Olivia Lemon, Worcester News Tonight. A Worcester police canine stabbed in the line of duty earlier this month is back to work. Worcester police sharing this picture of canine Beebs at a training session Thursday. The three-year-old Belgian Malinois has been with the department for two and a half years. Police say 41-year-old Joseph Perez stabbed Beebs multiple times in the head with a screwdriver. Perez is facing multiple charges, including assault with a dangerous weapon and armed assault to murder. 
The Wings of Freedom Tour lands at Worcester Regional Airport for the weekend. The show is put on by the Collings Foundation and features numerous aircrafts from World War II. Visitors will have the opportunity to tour the planes inside and out over the next three days. For the foundation, the show is an interactive history lesson. If you read about history, you might remember it. But to experience something from history, you tend not to forget. And that's what this tour is. It's an experience in World War II history. You can tour the show from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. Saturday and Sunday. An annual campaign raises millions of dollars for the Diocese of Worcester. This year, they came up just 5% short of their total goal. The Partners in Charity Appeal raised more than $4.7 million for the new fiscal year. The funds support different charity groups. This is the first time in four years the campaign did not meet or exceed the diocese goal. The diocese is now reviewing their budget and determining what adjustments will be needed. The Uncommon Job Fair attracts hundreds of people to the Worcester Common this afternoon. More than 50 employers came out looking to hire new talent. This is Mass Hire's seventh annual fair. They say this event helps the unemployment rate in Worcester go down and each year ends up seeing more employers than job seekers. We've had over 250 employers join us from all different types of industries and we've had over 5,000 uh, job seekers come to us in the past seven years. And in particular, our first year in 2013, we had about 1,200 job seekers. So as the economy has improved over the past couple of years, uh, we're seeing less and less job seekers come to these events. Mass Hire says it's called an uncommon job fair because it's held on the common, but food is served and activities are happening during the events.